Hey folks, what's going on? Appreciate you tuning in to my YouTube channel. If you don't mind, down below, make sure hit the subscribe button so that way you don't miss any content that I'm going to be kicking out this year during the 2023 season. I've got some installs that I'm going to be doing on my boat and I'm going to kick out some videos for you. You're not going to want to miss it. Power Pole is going to be sitting on the boat before very too long. So make sure subscribe down below. That way, you're also helping me reach my goal before the end of this year. I would really like to reach a thousand subscribers. Let me give you some back history about what my channel's about. I've had a lot of comments that have come through asking, they see my electric outboard video and stuff and saying, why are you not running a gas motor? It's much more efficient. Why, why electric outboard? Let me explain something. 25, 30 years ago, in the state in which I live in, planning began to meet the future needs of water supply, they come up with these reservoirs that were built to meet those water supply demand needs. So therefore, in the rules and regulations set forth by them, it states that they do not allow gas, period. Any type of gas motor is not allowed. So 25, 30 years ago when these lakes were built, we were putting around with trolling motors. Technology has advanced significantly electric outboards, lithium batteries. It is amazing what these products can do. Yes, they're not reaching the speeds of a bass boat yet, but understand something, these reservoirs are really fun to be on. It's peaceful, it's quiet. You don't have jet skiers, you don't have everything going around you. It's very peaceful. So until you try it, come to the state, you'll understand what I mean if you get on one of these waters. So if you don't mind, hit the subscribe button. This video is the 1648 Bass Tracker, Tiny Boat Nation. They had a hand in it for building this boat, as well as Tiny Boat Nation Southeast. It's located in Oxford, Georgia. Get over there and check them out. They helped me finish out my fully built boat, 1648 Bass Tracker, all electric, and there is not a single bit of wood in the boat anywhere. So this boat was a dream boat that I had envisioned for for years. And because of them, they made it come true. So sit back and enjoy. Here's the video that's gonna drop right now. So let's start back here in the goods of the back of the boat that's powered by an Elko EP20. It's a 48 volt uh, electric outboard. So I'm actually gonna be swapping out the, the batteries very, very soon. I've got a new 48 volt lithium battery packs, NIMS connected, um, that'll connect through to my HDS Live. So these are Lithium Pros, amazing batteries. If you have not, get over there and check out Lithium Pros. They have some amazing products. These batteries last better than any, any battery I've ever ran. So get over and check them out. I do have a little bit of an issue. There is some water that I think is actually originating from my plumbing uh, piping. You can see here with the, uh, the blue valve. Uh, that's actually the gravity drain for my live well. I think I've actually got one of these clamps that's just not completely sealed off because it never holds any water unless I take and, you know, put water through to the live well and try to drain it and stuff like that. So, so within here, I've also got uh, two bilge pumps. I have a manual bilge pump and then I have an automatic manual that I leave on automatic all the time. It's 750 gallons. The other one's an 800 gallon. I leave this one on at all times. That way, if I'm fishing during the day, it'll automatically take and drain out. I've got it running out this side. The manual I have going out this side of the boat. This is hydro turf that I put on top of the sub flooring that helps keep things from sliding around. I've got a uh, one 12 volt, uh, 30 amp battery that runs just solely. The Panther electric steering system uh, for the Elko. And then we've got a 100 amp hour lithium pros 12 volt battery that runs all of the utilities so everything inside of the boat 
We've got LED lighting uh, that's here within the boat, batteries uh, that go all the way up to the front of the live well. So we'll be swapping out these batteries very soon. I'm waiting until after our state championships. That way I can, I know what these batteries can do for placement and everything else. So I'm going to hold off. I'll do another video on the new install of the 48 volt lithium pro batteries that I'm going to be putting in here. Uh, the NIMS, uh, NEMA, I don't remember what the connectivity is. It's the ones that connect in through to my Lawrence HDS Live. So plenty, plenty of storage. Sorry folks for rushing. I'm trying to beat the rain. In this compartment, we have the, uh, it's a cooler combo. It could be used for if you want to put some bait while you're out there fishing with live bait. Most time my co-angler usually just uses it for tackle storage or, you know, simple stuff just to chunk in there real fast. So. Uh, over here on this side as well, we've got all of the utilities, um, all of the switch panel that runs everything from the boat, then plenty of little bit of storage that I always keep wintertime fishing, can't go wrong with some little bit of hot hands, charger cord, USB chargers, the aerator timer, then I have some, some other miscellaneous stuff within that, so really like it, keeps it dry. So down here on my drop down, I've actually got the Panther has got a electric steer left and right that is actually Velcroed and it's on a cord to where I can actually take it around as far as I want to on the boat. So really, really love the Panther steer. It is an amazing asset for your boat. If you haven't ever looked into that, it's awesome. Um, Tiny Boat Nation does sell them as well. So we've got the lanyard uh, that helps connect to my life jacket while I'm running the electric outboards. That way, if for some reason I were to fall off the boat, safety precautions first, always foremost. So that's the kill switch. Then I've got the key, turns it on. Then the throttle going forward, throttle going back. This is a top mount Lavorse, I believe is how you pronounce it. All right, so every one of these lids has got uh, lockable uh, hatches. So that way if I'm out traveling, I've got them to wear both rod lockers. I'll go ahead and open up this side. It's got dual rod lockers. I decided not to go with the, uh, the rod tubes. I just, I like having rods to just lay in here instead of just, you know, you're limited to so, only to so many if you were to do the rod tube. So. Uh, back here in the back, I installed uh, the fuse uh, bus bar with all the different fuses. And then I got the kill switch down here that manually cuts everything on, powers the entire utilities of the boat. All right. So right here is a very, very strong asset to the boat. This is the Lowrance Active Target Module. So this is where I have it mounted right here to the side. So that way... I can take and see fish swimming live. So again, uh, this is my my electric outboard part of it for the throttle assembly to go from the throttle to the actual motor to communicate. Dry hatch system on every single one of these lids available at tinyboatnation.net. Does not take and leak a drop down inside of it. Love them. All right, so right here, we've got this lid is actually where all of my tackle that I usually store, uh, co-angler myself as well. So plenty of room. Took the hydro turf that was on the boat, placed it down here, repurposed it and reused it for down in the lower compartment. And then I've got uh, some some little uh, pieces of, of metal that's mounted to the framing that I actually put a lot of my lures attached to. So absolutely love it. Uh, that's my 36 volt lithium pro battery. Uh, it runs my uh, Lawrence Ghost Trello motor. It's a 65 amp hour battery. <laughs> Those things, if you have not tried one of these batteries, without a doubt, they say it on their website, it's the one battery that you need. Literally, one battery, 36 volt, replaced my three batteries at about 100 pounds a piece. So, Amazing, amazing, amazing. Cannot say it enough. Lithium Pros. If you haven't, get over and check them out. LithiumPros.com. Amazing. Everything else back in behind the battery is completely open. There's nothing there. And the reason why I've done that is because I wanted to leave um, the boat itself 
to where there would not be any weight uh, up here in the front of the boat. So that way I could try to get as much lift as possible out of it. Lawrence Ghost, uh, tinyboatnation.net has also got the recessed troll trays. It is amazing how it keeps my back from getting sore for the day. So Lawrence Ghost trolling motor. Then we've got the, uh, I always call it this, and forgive me if it's wrong, the Lawrence uh, Active Target Hummingbirds mounted to a dual bridge um, made by Tiny Boat Nation, available on tinyboatnation.net. I know I keep repeating myself, but they have got some awesome products. Get over and check them out if you're interested. So while I'm standing here, I'm able to take and see, for the duration of the day, the Active Target. And when I'm actually running between spots, I just have my hummingbird that's mounted to my transom to where I have my side imaging, down imaging, and sonar. So I literally swap between the two. I usually don't run them at the same time. So then I've got my active target transducer that's mounted to Lawrence Ghost. Every bit of the turf that you see on this boat is actually sea deck. And I'm gonna tell you what, it is CNC routed turf. Absolutely love it. Super easy to clean and you can see it's raining on me and it really does a really great job. Uh, it's not slick whenever it's wet or nothing like that. And it's really awesome to clean up, super easy. All you have to do is take a little pressure washer, pressure wash it clean, or just like what it's doing right now and raining a little bit. Absolutely love the CNC routed turf. Tiny Boat Nation Southeast did this install. Super awesome, get over and check them out. They're in Oxford, Georgia. Check them out on social media. So, So down here, I've got my panel that has more uh, rocker switches on it that runs various different things. I have my navigation lights. I've got where my transom has the pole uh, for my white navigation light, or when it's during the daytime, I actually have my Yolo Tech mounted back there to run my action camera. Then I have my side LED lights for nighttime fishing. I can see further out from the boat. Then I have my anchor light uh, that's up front on the bow of the boat that has my red and green navigation. Then I've also got a uh, Anderson Quick Connect. Uh, I bought it off of Amazon. So that way it hooks for my front trolling motor ghost. I love these Quick Connects like this. It's a very safe, secure device to hooking up your trolling motors. If you been the type that you just use uh, crimped uh, pieces, change that. Go to these Anderson Connects. They really, really have strong connection points. And that's one of the biggest troubles that you see out of trolling motors. People putting them in, those connections get weak over time and will cause fires. I have seen it one too many times even myself. So underneath here, I've took underneath the trolling motor, I've actually took and painted the uh some people may actually knock this but i've not had any problems out of it so far i just wanted it to kind of blend in on the turf this is for the lawrence ghost the gps puck for it and it actually really helps to just blend in with the turf so i wanted it out of the way it used to be mounted uh up here on the front and i just constantly always walking down with stepping on it was just always in the way so absolutely love having this open area to be able to walk in and out on the boat Absolutely love it. Then up here on the front, I've got the stern light that actually has my Yolo Tech that attaches to my action cameras to where I'm recording while I'm out there fishing. This used to be where I had my ram mount for the fish finder. I'm actually gonna take this off and I'm gonna drill this out and make probably like a little cup holder I can maybe stick some different things and stuff like that right here below this or put a, a cup in it. So back here, I've actually got my transom savers, uh, ratchet strap mounts. That's really quick, easy. Press the red button to release it, be able to take and winch it down, piece of cake. Here I've got my drain that comes out from the bottom of the boat as well as the gravity drain. Uh, for the actual live well itself. Whenever that blue valve that was there is in the open position, it allows the water to physically drain out. 
it always drains completely out whenever I open that valve. Love that, having that in there instead of just manually pumping it. And I just painted over it, made it white, so it's already chipped a little bit, just need to touch up the paint. And then I have my screen for my live well fill. And then I've got my Hummingbird Helix. Uh, I actually am going to raise this transducer up just a little bit. I think I've got it set too low. Uh, I've actually seen some reduction in speeds on my boat since I've put this in. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. I didn't wanna drill into uh, my transom. So I just took a piece of the HDPE board that I used for underneath the bow of the trolling motor that's mounted underneath there. I took a piece of that HDPE and two part epoxied it to the actual transom solid as a rock. I mean, it ain't coming off. Then I took screws, screwed in the actual uh, transom bracket for the Helix transducer to this. So absolutely thought it done very, very well. So a guy that actually fished with me made this suggestion about these. I was having trouble with this boat. The bunks that was here originally, it, it was very difficult. The, the brackets were bent, messed up. You know, it just... It was difficult so i scratched them decided not to go with them and a guy that actually fishes with us suggested taking uh i bought this from home depot it's basically the the ladders that actually attach to your guttering whenever you use it for uh cleaning your gutters and stuff so i've actually mounted this to the frame of the actual trailer and then i bought just some some conduit uh electrical conduit pvc placed over top of this the boat actually slides very very easily yes it does take and scuff up a little bit on the actual boat itself uh, down the sides but being that it's a pvc type material you can literally sit there and just rub the pvc off of it so absolutely love the led trailer lights absolutely so for my led side lights i actually just took and drilled a hole put a rubber grommet through it so that way I could take and feed my wiring, which is all hooked in, connected in the front of the boat, which is all accessible through this panel. All I gotta do is pop this panel off and get that right down into it. Appreciate our sponsors, Georgia 811. Always, before you take and dig, before you have any excavation project, changing a mailbox out or anything at your house, contact 811 before you dig. You can go online, or you can call the universal number in any state, 811, so that way you dig safely at your project that you're gonna be doing. Power Pole, appreciate them. We've got a video that's gonna be up coming very soon of a Power Pole micro anchor installed on the boat. If you don't mind, leave me a comment. Let me know which side on the transom do you think would be best to place the Power Pole Micro Anchors. Lithium Pros that fully powers this total electric boat. I can fish from beginning today to end of day. Absolutely love it. Appreciate the guys at Tiny Boat Nation as well as Tiny Boat Nation Southeast that done the turf job on this boat. Absolutely love it. CNC custom routed turf. Never been happier. Forget carpet, sea deck. They got hydro turf. This stuff, the EVA foam, don't go with the Amazon special EVA foam. I promise you, it won't last. This stuff is made to last. So appreciate each and every one of y'all. Make sure subscribe if you hadn't. I've got some videos that's coming out very, very soon of our 2023 season. In two weeks, we will be representing the Georgia Bass Tech Total Electric Championship. Appreciate each and every one of y'all watching. God bless you. We'll see you on the next one.